find it in my fourth area of reflection. Catholic parents have the basic right and duty to educate their children. Anyway, we're ending where we began with our announced title. So we ask why? I've taught too many priests their theology not to know. You better have an answer to why. Why do Catholic parents have the basic right and the duty to educate their children? Because except for the parents, there wouldn't be any children. The authors under God are the children in this world. Obviously, what could be plainer? And the primary inalienable right and duty to educate those human beings who except for the parents would not even exist. Why? Because, having brought the children into the world, parents are the first teachers of their children. First in the order of time. The education of children begins, hear it, not only on reaching the age of reason. My friends, that can be too late. I mean it. And not only does his education begin at infancy, and my widowed mother told me, Johnny, you don't know this but I taught you how to kneel before you could walk. Not only this responsibility and corresponding right of the parents begins at conception over the years, having received my own doctorate in theology, had also finished my graduate studies in psychology. The child is already conditioned from the moment of conception. The faith and the behavior of father and mother in a mysterious way beyond our comprehension condition their children from the moment that God creates a human soul and infuses it into the fertilized ovum which combination we call, as Catholics, human conception. This parental right and duty is also first in the order of priority. This is the will of God. Parents have received this right to educate their children not from the state, not from civil society, but from God himself, who is the author of the souls that he created, each human soul individually, distinctively, differently, at the moment of our conception. Notice 
to hear saying that parents have both the right and the duty. Again, what are we saying? We are saying that parents have the divinely conferred and inalienable right to teach their children. We are saying they have the primary right in every aspect of human living. Hear it, not only, not only, even though we are correctly call religion, which has to do with God, but with everything which we incorrectly call secular subjects. There are no secular subjects in human education, period. Let me repeat. There are no merely secular subjects in human education. Why not? Because in the mind and providence of God, everything, everything we touch, everything we see, everything we hear, everything we feel, everything is meant by God to be a means of enabling us to reach the destiny for which God made us. From the Catholic perspective, there are then no areas of education that are not related to God. Everything a child learns, everything, whether you realize it or not, but God knows, is meant by Him to prepare and lead that child to the God from whom it came to return to that infinite, eternal family for whom that child was made. But parents have not only the right or primary claim to educate their children. Nobody gives you parents that right. No human being can receive that from God. Parents also have the primary duty. And once again, what do we mean? We mean that parents have the first fundamental divinely imposed responsibility to educate their children. We mean that parents have the grave obligation to draw out that which education means, draw out of their children the divinely conferred potential to become educated in this world for the world to come. I measure my language to be educated in this world, but dear God, not for this world, but for the world to come. How grave uh, is this and duty and right of parents to educate their children?
You may be surprised. We said it was primary. Well, the primacy had better be explained. That primacy means that everything, comma, everything, comma, everything in the life of the family should be subordinated to this primary duty and responsibility. Oh, how much and how deep self-examination of conscience Catholic parents should make. To ask themselves, what are the priorities? Mother and father ask, what are the priorities in our lives? And by now, this de-Christianized world in which we are living has usually the media, I repeat, with demonic success in seducing millions of otherwise believing parents into placing other priorities in their lives. Everything else, everything must be secondary. Everything, everything. Because how parents must hear this He will not get to heaven alone, either you spend yourselves, exhaust yourselves, if need be, lay down your lives to prepare your children for the heaven for which they were made or you risk your own salvation. It means, of course, that parents have got to ask themselves before God, what in our lives have become unruly attachments, creatures that in themselves are not sinful, but that are keeping us, I repeat, father and mother, from providing for our children what they most need. And what they most need, the children from their parents, hear it is the grace of God, which is true, authentic Catholic education. Because it is not only or mainly in what you teach your children, it is not mainly in the ideas which you share with them, Catholic education is principally the operation of divine grace. Oh, the trilling of the air with syllables. Oh, the learning of Catholic theology. There'll be so much wasted desert air. Unless parents are channels of their grace to the children whom they brought into this world. And you will be as effective channels of grace to 
for the children whom you've brought into this world, as you yourselves are united with God by his grace. Only believing parents produce believing children. Only chaste parents reproduce chaste children. Only humble parents reproduce humble children. Only praying parents reproduce prayerful children. Only holy parents reproduce, by the grace of God, holy children. Dear Lord, we beg you to enlighten the minds and inspire the hearts of Catholic parents and the modern world today where the light and strength that only you can give so that that children who are conceived and born in this valley of tears will enjoy your company in that heavenly Easter season for which we were made. Thank you for listening to me.